criticize anyone, must one. But uh, as we see, Mr. Darcy, he has far too much zeal and far too little knowledge. Or so it may seem to some, Miss Wilson. <clears throat> He's trained in medicine, I've heard. Some training, <laughs> but apparently not very thorough in whatever he does. I'd like to meet this Mr. Taylor. Isn't that he coming just now? I'm Mr. Roberts, charge of the office here. I'm Hudson Taylor. You're the new arrival in Shanghai? Yes, sir, I am. I'm Jonathan Darcy, a business agent here. How do you do, sir? Very pleased to meet you, Mr. Taylor. I'm John Burden. Yes, I, I've heard of you. Mr. Taylor and I have met informally. I must run along now. Good seeing you again, Miss Wilson. Mr. Roberts, if there's ever anything I can do, Mr. Taylor, don't hesitate to call on me. Well, uh, as a matter of fact, sir, I, I have been wanting some information about trips to the interior. The interior? Well, uh, yes, sir. I'm afraid that's something our office doesn't attend to. Good day, Miss Wilson. Gentlemen. I'd like to hear more about your plans of, of the interior. I don't fully understand the cross. Perhaps we never can. But I'm deeply sobered by our Lord's words when he said that if we would follow him, we must, not just may, we must take up our cross. I was in Ningpo last week. I want to visit Ningpo. Oh, that you must. I met a young lady there by the name of Barella Dyer who interests me very much. She has a younger sister. Her name is uh, Maria, I believe. Uh, yes, Maria. There's a girl in London whom I love deeply. And I'm asking God to call her to China, even as he has called me. They're probably going to the temple in that village we just passed. Can we go? We could. Would they permit us to distribute literature? Oh, I should think so. The country people are especially friendly. May we have your attention, please? We have some literature. This literature explains the way to God through His Son, Jesus Christ. Shishi. 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 Biokuchi. We are not merchants or traders, only humble servants of the true God. Then you are holy men? We are not holy. Only our Lord is holy. Who is this Lord? 
of whom you speak. Is he the emperor of your land? God loves us, but we still are sinners. His son Jesus died for our sins and paid for our penalty of our sin. It is surely true? Yes. Yes, honorable sir. The Son of God himself has said, I am the way, and the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The Mandarin. This will make great material for our diaries. For what purpose have you come to Dongjiao? May it please your honored presence to learn that we are missionaries uh, from, from Shanghai. I was formerly assigned to a post in Shanghai. I know the excellent work being done on behalf of the Chinese people. I had business matters to attend to at the council yesterday. While I was there, word came through of what really happened in Tung Chao. Council, strong opinion that your venture did more harm than good. But we were well received by the Mandarin himself. Would it not be wisdom to have made arrangements with the Mandarin in the first place? To come at his invitation. We want all of China evangelized, but this must be in God's time. Many of us see the wisdom of establishing strong bases in the coastal areas, then moving into the interior. Are you really suited for the interior, Mr. Taylor? You were ill for a week with dysentery before Mr. Burden and you went on this trip. You couldn't find an established mission who would send you here, so you came independently. Isn't that correct? I was looking for a mission that would send me to the interior. Why didn't you volunteer for the army? Then at least you would have had a gun for protection. <laughs> <coughs> Mr. Taylor. We appreciate your work at the clinic. Thank you, sir. Perhaps medical missions will be the arm our Lord uses to open all of China to the gospel. I understand there is a Dr. Parker and his family coming here to work with you. Have you given any thought to living quarters for them? I have. John! Oh, there you are! See you again, John. And you, Hudson. Please. You shouldn't let people like Miss Wilson disturb you so, Hudson. I try to respect others' viewpoints, John. And I don't mean to be a renegade. But I, I just had to be closer to the people. I'm sorry I can't offer you any tea. Oh, that's all right. Have you been quite ill? I'm all right. Dr. Parker was in to see me this morning. Oh, he's a prince. Did he tell you? 
he's interested in opening a clinic and possibly even a hospital in Ningpo. That's hardly the interior, but at least it's out of Shanghai. I have a special interest in Ningpo, remember. I've asked God but for two things, John. A ministry to China is unreached. And a wife. I need a wife, John. Oh, a thousand pardons. I brought some mail for you. Has she booked passage for Shanghai? She's concerned whether Shanghai is as modern as England. What the servants are like. What comforts and conveniences she can expect. mission surely is a real key to opening all of China to the gospel, Dr. Parker. It's exciting to think about. Hudson certainly sees the potential. Hey, you can't hold my way. Turn the home out. Home out way. How do we identify with these people? How would people back in England react if a couple of those chaps came walking across Trafalgar Square? We English were the lost ones and the Chinese the Christians. Most of us wouldn't listen to the gospel either, would we? You could abandon Western dress, put on Chinese clothes. I thought about that. But how would I look shaving my head and wearing a pigtail? He could be as peculiar as Miss Aldersey. Who's Miss Aldersey? Hudson. <laughs> there she is, the inimitable Miss Aldersey of Ningpo. As Barella tells me, she's not peculiar, just singular. Actually, she's the top line of the social register as far as what you can and cannot do in this community. Doesn't she have a school for girls? Runs it like a military regiment. Students and teachers alike. Uh, this Burella Dyer of whom you speak, isn't she one of the teachers in Miss Aldous' school? Well, temporarily. I have higher plans in mind for Miss Dyer's future. Doesn't she have a sister Hudson should be introduced to? Now, the only young lady who interests me is back in England. But from what I've heard you say, it's not at all certain this girl in England will ever come to China. So what's the harm in your at least meeting Maria Dyer? We'll join the everlasting throne and crown him Lord of all. I'm sure you have all met Dr. Parker and are as interested as I am about the prospect of opening a medical work here in Ningpo. Before I say anything about the possibilities here in Ningpo, I'd like you to meet my associate. He's a medical man himself and predates me here in China, Hudson Taylor. I'm sure you'll all want to meet Mr. Taylor personally before you leave. I'm a churchman myself, Mr. Taylor. But I'm your business agent, not the director of your mission. I'm pleased to hear of the good time you had in Ningpo. But unless your mission back in London, whatever it's called, unless your people attend to affairs more discreetly, you won't be performing divine service anywhere. Might I suggest you not 
thank God for this. Thank the patience of my superiors who were willing to grant you another temporary loan since there is nothing in your account. We're all impressed with the way you live by faith, as you say. But faith in itself won't buy much rice, will it? Perhaps I shouldn't take the money. Oh, take it, Mr. Taylor. We trust you. It isn't that. There's a ship due in from Liverpool on Wednesday, I believe. Perhaps there will be some mail from your, uh, your mission. Why can't I just abandon myself in the will of God? Are you there, Hudson? John, come in. You ought not come up here just to bring my mail. Oh, it's always good to see you. And it's good to hear from my family. Even if Elizabeth is slow to write. How do you feel? Quite well now, for several days. Your friends are concerned about your living alone like this. I'm concerned. I did bring news from Dr. Parker. He's caught on quite well, as you know. He has, and I haven't. Don't take it that way, Hudson. You have the respect of many people. I among them. Anyway, Dr. Parker wanted me to tell you of a financial grant which has come in. I'm not sure of the details, but someone's needed to dispense literature. Not here in Shanghai, but out in the countryside. Quite naturally, it's your name that everyone concerned first thinks of. tea to refresh my body. But how I long to be your servant, to pour out for you the water of eternal life. But I cannot speak a word of your dialect. Bless these beautiful people, Lord. And may they one day stand with me at thy throne.
Welcome to our village, honorable friend. I have literature, the words of the true and, and living God and his love for all men. You will pardon, please, this ignorant one's question. I was wondering if you could kindly explain to my humble ears the reason for those buttons in the middle of your honorable back. When I was a young man, never thinking over what I had Yes. Yes. yes, I'm sure you did. Good grief! What is this? Extraordinary. God bless you, Hudson. How can you encourage him? Why, this is the most ridiculous thing I've seen in all my years in China. Why, it's a... it's an absolute sacrilege. Mr. Taylor! Oh. You, uh, honor us, Mr. Taylor. Oh. You are truly one of us. Aren't you being somewhat of an exhibitionist? Zeal is a commendable attribute. God knows most church people could use more of it. But zeal in itself can dilute every good intention. The Chinese in the street must think you're a clown. A bank draft from your mission. It just covers the loans we've extended. I presume you want us to grant another loan. Is there any mail for me? As a matter of fact, yes. My God shall supply all your need. Lord, teach me more of what it means to rest in thy will. Oh, yes, here we are. We could perhaps make a small loan. Not today, Mr. Darcy. But thank you. Do you have money? I just happened to see you. No, it didn't just happen, John. God knew I needed you. From the girl in England? Yes. She's there? Ah, uh, she's she. What does it mean to you, John? To be totally committed to Jesus Christ? Self? Ambitions? Uncertainties. Everything committed to him. Here I am. In China. Missionary. The place and position where I thought the fulfillment of my very dreams would occur. But Hudson, remember when you told me how you tested God back in England? How you sought opportunity to live by faith. Like the time the doctor you were working for forgot to pay your salary. You were so determined to trust God you wouldn't ask him for it. And you gave away your last coin to help a starving family. 
it is one thing to trust the Lord for our material needs. I thank him for the experiences he has allowed me to have in that. But I, I have a greater need. I can't explain it. I'm, a, I'm aware of God's presence in my life. He is the delight of my very soul. But there's, there's something missing. I stopped when I saw you because of our friendship, but I also brought some information. How would you like to minister in a village that's never been visited by any of the missionaries? My mission is considerably behind in my salary. I wouldn't... Go ahead with your tea. I don't mean to pry into your personal affairs, but isn't that a letter from George Mueller? Mr. Mueller prays for me. When that man talks to God, all heaven falls silent. John Burden and I are in Sungming. It's an island city in the Yangtze. A substantial gift from George Mueller made it possible for me to come. I cannot tell you how much it means to know my family is holding me up before the Father's throne as he again and again supplies my needs. Even though Shanghai is only 30 miles from this island community, no one has come here before to present Christ to these people. They are truly delightful, the people in Songming. China is a culture rich in tradition, which happens to be quite different from our own. My medical training limited though it is, opens the door to many hearts. As you know, the Western world has left a bad impression upon the Chinese mind. There is such skepticism. However, slowly but surely, we are winning the confidence of these dear people. Do what you can to persuade Elizabeth. What a ministry she would have among the women of this great country. Oh, John. If I had a thousand lives, I'd give them all for China. You're a great soul, Hudson. I'm much the better man for having known you. Much the better Christian. How good it was of you suggesting we come to Sungming. I feel as though, for the first time in some ways, I am finally able to do the work of a missionary. You'll become a man of great faith. No, John. God isn't looking for men of great faith. Only some... some common souls like you and me who are willing to trust in His great faithfulness. I often wonder what that word means, trust. Sometimes I think I knew, I knew more about it before I came to China. I remember a minister with whom I spoke of the, of the faith of the early apostles. I told him I would like to be able to do what they did, to go with, with neither purse nor script. I'll never forget what he told me. Ah, my boy, he said. As you grow older, you will get wiser than that. Such an idea would be fine when Jesus himself was on earth, but, but not now. <laughs> well, the Lord taught me tithing in those days. To set aside the first fruits for him. But in my work as a medical assistant, I received a very small salary. And when I took 10% from it, I didn't have sufficient funds to cover my expenses. So what did you do? Oh, I, I found cheaper accommodations and learned that I could live on much less than I had previously thought possible. So many times God supplied my needs. Anonymous gifts. God's supply at just the moment of need. 
The Lord was preparing you for your ministry. Yes, but... But now that I'm here, here where God has so surely sent me, I, I feel as though I know so little about fully trusting Him. I don't think it's how little you know, Hudson. It's how much more you want to know. It's your capacity for what the Lord is going to do for you and through you. Was there anything in the post for me? Only this letter from John. Mm. He's coming to Lingpo soon. Mm. I'm so happy. We'll be finalizing our wedding plans. As I told you, John has been with Hudson Taylor in Sung Ming. They had a wonderful time until some opposition arose and they were advised to leave, at least temporarily. John writes how impressed he is with Hudson Taylor, but how so many people in Shanghai in the business community especially, but also one or two of the missionaries. How critical they are of Hudson Taylor for taking on Chinese ways. But does he do it to be rebellious? Or because he thinks it's the most effective way to reach people? Oh, John says there were many times in Sun Ming when people didn't question but what Hudson Taylor was one of them. Miss Wilson. Yes? May I have a word with you, please? Of course. Please, won't you sit down? There seems to be a good bit of discussion about Hudson Taylor. I had some business calls this morning. One was with a trader from Holland. Two were with English gentlemen. They were all joking about this young fanatic. These gentlemen indicated they got their information from you. Hudson Taylor is an embarrassment to everyone here in Shanghai. You no doubt have heard. He has received a definite rejection from the young lady he had hoped would come to China and marry him. <laughs> Doubtless a wiser soul than he will ever be. <laughs> Non-Christian businessmen in the international settlement are always looking for something to criticize among us missionaries. Just now it's Hudson Taylor. But don't you think we missionaries could show sympathy and encouragement? Encouragement? Sympathy, perhaps. But encouragement just sends his kind after more misery. It's as though the pages are all blank, Lord. My soul is... is empty and... dry and dead. What is it? What is it that, that lacks in my life? How do I become fully committed to you? More conscious of the Holy Spirit's presence and, and guidance. I've been talking to some of the missionaries. It appears you could use a Scottish lackey to help you with your work. Oh, no doubt you've never heard of me. My name is William Burns. The evangelist from Scotland? You perhaps have heard that William Burns has invited Hudson Taylor to share a ministry with him along the coast and as soon as possible into the interior. William Burns? Then he has less sense than I give him credit for. What I've been saying is illustrated in your Chinese character for righteousness. The word for lamb is on the top, the word for me on the bottom. When you trust the Lord Jesus, God does not see you in your sin. He sees you through his son, the Lamb of God, who died on the cross to cleanse you from your sin. And that's righteousness. Have you seen this God of whom you speak? Not with my eyes, but with my heart. Mm. A wise one has said, he who make a successful journey must walk with his eyes as well as his feet. And God's word says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Mm. 
You may have had your critics back in Shanghai, but I marvel at the rapport you have with the people we've met in our journey. They accept you as one of them. Thank you. Feels good. How beautiful are the feet of him that bringeth good tidings. I never dispute scripture, but look at these ugly feet. They're all we have, Brother Burns. I'll have to do. <laughs> William Burns has become a reservoir of strength. The Lord surely sent him to me in my deep need. We have established a temporary base in a town called Nanzin. For the past several days, we have been separated. Mr. Burns has been doing survey for other places of ministry. I had expected him back this morning at the latest, but... Sheng Wen Ni Kui Xing. Peng Yu. Brother Burns. It may not be easy to teach an old dog new tricks, but it's not impossible. <laughs> As far as the east is from the west, God's word assures us, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. God hates sin, but God loves sinners. And he loves you, my friend, no matter how great your sin. Mix equal parts of these in a half a cup of water, then add a tablespoon of leaven's oil in the big brown bottle. You're working too hard, Hudson. You should take a rest. Horses are smarter than men, my mother always said. They know when to rest. I'll be better in the morning. Not if you're dependent on Levin's oil. The bottle's completely empty. Then pour me a little of the brown medicine. Like my mother always said, the bitterer the medicine, the faster the remedy. <laughs> I'm running low on about all medications. And we need more literature. Why don't you take a boat back to Shanghai for supplies? And I'll go on and survey the situation in Swatow, and we'll meet there. My dear parents, whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth. I can only hope recent events prove he does indeed love me dearly. First, as I wrote last month, I lost all my medical supplies and 30,000 New Testaments in the warehouse fire. Now I have received word from William Burns that it is inadvisable for me to think of rejoining him at this time. Pray that I may be patient, that I will not fall prey to the error of those who try to bear today's burdens with tomorrow's grace, just when everything was going so well. Now it is as though everything has come to an end. Through it all, deep in my heart, I know God has a plan, his perfect plan. But for now, I am weak and discouraged and very, very lonely. <laughs> it's good to have you settled here in Ningpo. You and Dr. Parker make a fine team. Settled? If God so wills, my wish is to rejoin William Burns. Any word from him? No, nothing. I only know he was arrested in Swatow and escorted to Canton.
This old is he? You knew as well as anyone there would be talk when you decided to resign your mission board and become completely independent. But it's wonderful, John. No salaries, no guarantees. Only trusting God and seeing him never fail. I'm only sorry some misjudged my motives. We really must have you meet my fiancé's sister. It's so exciting, your wedding. Two orphan sisters. The Lord takes our parents in Malaya. He sends us to China, where chances of marriage are very slim. You seemed excited, or should I say pleased, when my John introduced you to Hudson Taylor. Barella. It's obvious Miss Aldersey doesn't look favorably at him in any light, but John was very impressed with him when he and Mr. Taylor ministered together. I want God's will for my life more than the air I breathe. But you'll admit that you are quite taken with Mr. Taylor. Well, only if the Lord should indicate. Would you ever consider marrying him? Maria would consider no such thing. She used to have nothing whatever to do with Hudson Taylor. Well, if he were ordained, if he were at least a fully qualified doctor. My husband and I have such confidence in both you and Dr. Parker. It's unfortunate the way some criticize you. I try not to mind. Have you thought of returning to England to further your medical training? I hope to someday. You might also find a wife to share your vision. Of course, it's possible the Lord has already sent your future mate to China. Perhaps what you need is a matchmaker. I don't think I could endure another rejection. Oh, thank you, Miss Aldersey. If you two will excuse me. Mm -hmm. Barella. I must have your help. It isn't easy to be thought of as a spoiler. I don't understand. Of course you do. When Dr. Parker and Hudson Taylor were here yesterday, Maria could hardly take her eyes off that young upstart. Maria has so much potential for the Lord's service. But everything Hudson Taylor does turns into a fiasco. He moved out of the international settlement in Shanghai against everyone's advice. He resigned his mission and calls himself an independent. He goes contrary to the counsel of mature missionaries again and again. He was only with William Burns for a short time. He's ill more than he's well. I'll be surprised if he remains in Ningpo more than a few months. Only long enough to... Barella, please. For your sister's sake. Help me to protect Maria from doing something she will regret for the remainder of her life. Maria is called to serve in China. If... Terrible thought. If she were to marry Hudson. His poor health would send them both back to England. Oh, God, grant me your will. Show me your guidance above any other consideration. For thou art my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for thy name's sake, lead me and guide me. Could it be, Lord? 
right here in China, you have prepared someone to share my ministry with me. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. I've been guided in the past so often by my own desires, Heavenly Father. I ask now for your guidance. I... I hate being the devil's advocate, Maria. Uh, working here in Miss Aldersey's school as I do. Yet I have such a compulsion to help you. If you're truly interested in Mr. Taylor. People are are so bound to convention, to fixed ideas. Do you love him? I... Uh, I... can only say that... that the first time I saw Mr. Taylor, I... Uh, I felt as though God were speaking to me. I felt... Oh, he feels the same way. That young man walks with God, just as you do, dear girl. May I encourage him? And so, sincerely believing it to be God's will that I do so, I respectfully request your hand in marriage. Utter nonsense. Well, there's not an eligible lady in the Orient. What a young lady in her right mind who would consider such a proposal. How shall I answer the letter? By sitting down this minute while I tell you how to answer it. Maria, darling. When your missionary parents died while serving the Lord in Malaya, and your guardian, Mr. Tan, sent you and Barella to work in my school, I felt a mother's compassion for you. Regardless of what you may or may not think of me and my counsel, surely you know that you need Mr. Tan's blessing before you can even contemplate marriage. And you know what Mr. Tan, your guardian, would say to this, this nonsense. Right, Maria. Right, as I tell you. I, I told you I, I couldn't endure another rejection. This isn't rejection. This is coercion. Keep serving the Lord, Hudson, and trusting him to guide you. Mr. Taylor. Mm. I come to hospital. You make me well. I come to chapel. You make me sick again. You need God's eternal medicine. The salvation through his son, our Lord Jesus Christ. The Chinese word for come has special meaning. The main character is the cross. On either side of the cross is the character for man. God's son the Lord Jesus hung on the cross between two men and both of them, my friends, were thieves. I declare unto you the gospel, the apostle writes, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he rose again on the third day according to the scriptures.
Oh, my father, exactly my need for the remainder of this month. Who but my lord could have told these people of the amount? God's work, done in God's way, would never lack God's supply. Delight thyself also in the Lord, and he shall give thee the desires of thine heart. These feelings that I have for Hudson. My God shall supply all your need. Oh, again and again you are proving this to me, Lord. Commit thy way into the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. I told Barella I would put away her things. Wasn't it a lovely wedding? She and John seemed so happy. I wrote to your guardian, Mr. Tan, trying to explain why Hudson Taylor wasn't fit. You wrote? Mr. Tan gives his full consent to your marriage to Hudson Taylor. There's, there's something I need to tell you. Before I came to China, God permitted me to have a great adventures in faith. I've had such adventures here, but, well, since I've come to China, there's something, an emptiness, unfulfillment. I thought perhaps our marriage... Maria, you offer me more than I ever dreamed a marriage could bring. It isn't that. Something's wrong. My wife passed away early this morning. You'll need to be in charge for a few days. Isolate the patient as best you can. Follow carefully the instructions Dr. Parker gave us. Can you see Mrs. Wong? She's very troubled. I'll go. Thank you. You are very ill, Mrs. Wong. We are doing everything we can to help you with our medicine. Won't you also consider your need for Jesus? I need Jesus. Are you sure you're not feverish? Just a bit weary. Must you take the chapel service tonight? There's no one else available. Hudson. <sighs> Dr. Parker is in only briefly. He can't get over the death of his wife. Mm. There's so much work to be done at the hospital. And I will be adding to that burden about eight months from now. Maria. Come in, please. Oh. 
Hudson, I can't cope anymore. With my wife gone, the children to look after. I'm leaving China, taking my family back to England. How did it go? Amputation is beyond my knowledge and experience. But I asked God for wisdom and the surgery was a success. I'm the one in need of spiritual surgery. Sometimes the, the pressures and all the responsibilities. With Dr. Parker God and, and my minimal qualifications. You lost your temper with some of the workers? It happens so seldom. But the point is, it happens. How can I, I possibly expect the new Christians here to be Christ-like when, when my own life... What does it mean to be so completely in God's will? So identified with Christ that... Have you been going over the accounts? We haven't received anything for the work in almost a month. There have been so many in need of food and... and our store of medicines is very low. That's the last of the rice, dear Hudson. The very last. I gave another day's supply to our workers, as you instructed. We have no food for tomorrow. Praise the Lord. No food, but all of God's promises. The Lord knows we will wake up tomorrow morning needing breakfast. Oh, Hudson. These arrived on the boat from Shanghai. Thank you. Hudson, here's a draft for ten pounds. This one's from George Mueller. How unfortunate if all our needs were provided in advance. What is the baby's name? Mei Lin. And how old is she? Four days. Oh. <coughs> Precious little baby. I was with Maria uh, today. Mm. I mentioned the word we'd received about the Winstons and their great need. Mm -hmm. She and Hudson dispatched a worker to take some food to them. I think they sent some money, too. That's nice. Oh, that we had a hundred more couples like Maria and Hudson. For many years, I have sought the truth, as did my fathers before me. But only here, in the words you have spoken, has peace come to my heart. Is the gospel well known in your country? 
It is, sir. For how long has the gospel been known to the people of your land? Hundreds of years, Mr. Ne. You have had the truth so long and only now come to tell us? Did I tell you about the man who expressed his need for salvation at the meeting last night? You remember Nang Kwai, the basket maker? He was so fascinated with our lantern slides on the life of Christ. His employer paid him only a, a small wage plus his food. I shall always remember how beautifully he opened his heart to Christ. When he told his employer he could no longer work on the Lord's Day, he, he was discharged. His former employer warned the other basket makers not to hire Nang Kwai. So he went into business for himself. A woman stopped him on the street and asked to, to purchase an incense basket. Nang Kwai told her he, he was a Christian and didn't sell such baskets. She was disgusted and laughed. But a businessman overheard them and, and came to ask Nang Kwai about his witness. That's the man who trusted Christ after the service tonight. I have been thinking about these words in Proverbs. Where there is no vision, the people perish. I wonder if it could be twofold. Lack of vision causes lost thoughts to perish. But lack of vision also causes the Christians to waste their lives, their talents, their capabilities. So in a sense, for the lack of vision, the Christians also perishes. I've never seen people so responsive. And I've never seen you so tired. Please, won't you go and get some rest now? I will. But I, I do have several patients I need to still see. You feel better, Daddy? Much better, Gracie. I had a very good rest. So many have heard of our work in other villages, so they want us to come to them. Today非常的高興能夠來到各位的這個當中,能夠跟大家分享一點我自己的個人的見證。Why won't God give me strength? Shouldn't we consider a furlough? Leave China? All the, the need, the, the opportunity. We'd have to close the hospital. Close the hospital temporarily. Or conclude our ministry permanently. Better. A bit, thank you. And how's your dolly feeling today, Gracie? Fine. Good. Good. So many requests for speaking engagements. As soon as you're strong enough. I'm feeling better every day. I'm sure I'll be able to get back to medical school next term. Good. The church is asleep. Armchairs and and sofas and the comforts of life in England seem more important than souls perishing without Christ.
It's very late, dear. I've been reading about Israel. If they're materialistic disobedience. You know what I believe, Maria? God set apart the tribe of Levi to be his priest. But it was his intention for all of Israel to serve him. Just as I believe God wants every Christian to be a missionary. Daddy? Oh, not now, Gracie. Daddy's studying. If one were to sense God's call to China, the interior of China, that is, can you recommend a missionary organization considering such candidates? I'm afraid there aren't any such organizations. The Great Commission is not an, an option to consider. It is a command to obey. To James Hudson Taylor, membership in the Royal College of Surgeons. Will women be needed in the interior? If there's no missionary organization sending workers to the interior of China, what are we to do? What can I tell those young people? What should they do? I know what you should do. Get some rest or you'll be right back where you were those weeks before furlough. Accept this invitation from those friends in Brighton to come and relax for a few days. You'll be right on the beach. I don't want to start another mission, Lord. But if young people are, are willing to go, if there's no one else to, to lead them, oh God, give us 24 candidates for China and help me to trust you for the financial needs. Oh, help me, Lord. Chinese isn't a language, it's a speech impediment. I like China, Daddy, do you? With all my heart, Gracie. Did you hear how many of the hospital patients responded to the gospel today? Did they respond to the gospel? Or are they just making sure they get priority if they have health problems in the future? They don't like the climate. They don't like the people. They don't like the living quarters. What did they expect this was going to be? Some type of holiday? They're young. Inexperienced. Be patient with them. Please, Hudson. Mr. Taylor? Mr. Stedman, come in. Would you care to sit down? No, thank you. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Some of us have been talking. Now, what's your problem? I realize that, that we've been overreacting. With God's help and with your patience, we'll try to be more cooperative. God bless you. China Inland Mission. The name is more meaningful every time I think about it. I'm sorry that, that we have so little faith. When your faith is so great. No. No, I... I don't have great faith. The Lord only asks us to trust in, in his great faithfulness.
Good day, Mr. Taylor. Mrs. Taylor. Good day. You see, if we'll just be patient. Why? Why do I lose my temper? Oh. If I am to be a a leader of these people. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Taylor. Do come in. My, <clears throat> my wife. Well, for me also, of course, but especially her, she. What I mean to say is that we wish to be released, to, to go back to England. Release you? Millions of Chinese waiting to hear the gospel. And you want to go home? If you... If you came to China in the will of God, my friend, then you had better be sure you leave China in the will of God. Don't the new missionaries like it here, Daddy? Some of them. The others will, too. I'm a nurse. A nurse, are you? Daddy thinks you're an angel. Angels fly, Daddy. I can't fly. I walk. And run sometimes. And skip. <laughs> <laughs> Daddy should be home soon. He went to another city to help the new missionaries. I think Mr. Taylor is as interested in building his own little empire as he is in evangelizing the Chinese. Here his daughter's desperately ill, and he's gone away. Oh, dear Lord. How's Gracie? She's much worse. Were you delayed? I received a message from one of our workers that Miss Kentfield was very ill. But when I reached the place, she was... Hardly ill at all. China Inland Mission. We should call it Taylor Overseas Enterprises. How dare you speak that way? He didn't know Gracie was so ill when he left. Why, she only had a small fever. And besides, he did go to help one of us. There's nothing more I can do. Oh, Maria. If only I had come sooner. We love you. I miss her. 
God gives his very best to those who leave the choice with him. Come in. We would like a word with you and Mr. Taylor. Won't you come in and sit down, please? We'll only be just a moment. We speak for several of the others. Not only are we deeply touched by Gracie's death, but challenged by the courage and faith that both of you have shown during this time of testing. You're helping me to learn, for the first time in my life, really, how to commit everything to the Lord. I even asked God to help me with the chopsticks and I got on jolly well at lunch. Mr. Taylor, I believe in your vision for China, and I'm asking God to show me how to fully share that vision with you. Rule supreme in my heart, O oh Lord. Cleanse me so thy love can flow through me. I have a confession to make. When I first came here, well, let me say it this way. Every day, I discover more and more what a true Christian you are and how capable you are. As one of our wise men has said, true praise spoken from the heart is more beautiful than the singing of birds at sunrise. I keep thinking about what you said to us at prayers last night. There is a living God. He has spoken in the Bible. He means what he says and will do all that he promises. God bless you, Travis. How soon do you expect the baby? In about two months, according to the doctor. But I think it may be sooner. Hudson. Uh, please, uh, come in. Mr. Taylor, we understand now what you've been trying to teach us. We want to identify with the Chinese. Our baby. The Lord is taking him, Maria. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. I don't get my strength back the way I have other times. I know. We're doing all that we can. M Maria. These new recruits, they, they expect guidance and I feel as though I'm the one in need of guidance. There was some mail for you this morning. Nothing from overseas. Something from Hangzhou. From John McCarthy. Dear Hudson, I have been thinking much about our discussion your search and my own for what it means to be truly committed to our Lord Jesus. I have found these thoughts in the book you left with me. The Lord Jesus received his holiness begun. The Lord Jesus cherished his holiness advancing. 
the Lord Jesus counted upon as, as never absent would be holiness complete, abiding, not striving or struggling, but resting in the love of an almighty Savior. May he lead us in the realization of his unsearchable fullness. I have found John 15 especially helpful. John 15, the vine, the branches. Oh God, help me. God, show me. Abide in me, and I in you. He that abideth in me, and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. I don't strive for faith. I rest in your faithfulness. Oh God, help me God. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Clean. I'm clean. He that abideth in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit, for without me ye can do nothing. Nothing. Myself. But, but in you, Lord, everything. Complete. Clean. ready to serve you. Not my righteousness, Lord. Yours. Not my wisdom. But yours. Not my strength. The fullness of the Holy Spirit the anointing of God on my life, the cleansing, the guidance. O oh Maria, Christ is the vine. He is the soil, the, the roots. There itself is everything. And we are are complete in him. And so it was, on the mountaintop, Hudson Taylor found that for which he had so long searched, an assured identity with Jesus Christ as his authentic disciple. There would be struggles. The years ahead continued times of learning, discovering successfully how to reach into the heart of China, the China he so devotedly loved, and bring to her people the good news of salvation, the light of eternal hope, a ministry which continues to grow, reaching even today all across Asia as the Overseas Missionary Fellowship. The pioneer exploits of Hudson Taylor and the hundreds of others who became his fellow laborers in the China Inland Mission set a pattern for scores of other faith missions in other areas of the world. There were great victories, and yet the Heavenly Father, who does indeed reserve his very best for those who leave the choice with him, permitted more times of testing, more valleys, more shadows. I learned so much new thing in your hospital. And I've heard so many nice things. I've things. just heard that Mrs. Taylor is very ill. Oh, no! Maria. You're 
going home. You will soon be with Jesus. Die. I feel no pain. Only very tired. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry to go to be with Jesus. For many years, not even a cloud between me and my Savior. He will be with you. was James Hudson Taylor, the man who dared to believe in the faithfulness of God, whatever the test, and who, because he so believed, because he acted upon that belief, became a trusted child through whom his Lord could pour out blessing to many others. So it could be for us, for you, and for me, in a world where so few know what it truly means to trust in the greatness and faithfulness of a sovereign God. <laughs>